All right, how do we find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence? Um, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which the difference between the consecutive terms is constant. Okay, so that just between each term, you go the same amount, just like in a line with a slope. Okay, um, like if the slope was three, like in our example over there, uh, every single jump, you just go up three. So, and then that common difference is denoted D with a line that would be just the slope. So, is this sequence arithmetic? Well, what's the difference between negative 5 and 3? Two. Yeah, positive 2. What's the difference between negative 3 and one, negative 1? Positive 2. Positive 2. So, the difference between each consecutive term is constant. Right, and what is that common difference? Two. Two. All right, finding the common difference, we think about it like slope. So just like with slope, uh, an input of x would give you an output of y. So we do the whole y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It, with a sequence, an input of k would give us a sub k. Uh, input of L, A sub L. So we can do the outputs A sub K minus A sub L over the inputs K minus L. So let's do this example together. If A1 equals 4 and A sub 3 equals 13, let's find the common difference D. Alright, how would I set that up? D equals... Okay, so yeah, we're given A sub 1 and A sub 3. So if I think about it in the terms of slope, that'd be like a sub 3 minus a sub 1 over 3 minus 1. Because if I input a 3, I'll get my output a sub 3. That's my third term in the sequence. The first term in the sequence is the a sub 1. So um, well, what's a sub 3 equal? 13. And a sub 1? over 3 minus 1. 13 minus 4? 9. 9 over? OK, good. OK, so the rule for the arithmetic sequence when you have a sub 1 is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So this is whenever you're trying to find a, an expression for the nth term in the sequence. So here I have, I'm given a sub 1 and I'm given d. So I'm going to plug those into the formula to find an, ex, uh, an expression for any nth term. So a sub n equals a sub 1 equals 2 plus n minus 1 times d, 4. I distribute the 4 plus 4n minus 4. And my expression for the a sub n for the nth term is 4n minus 2. Yes. All right, finding a rule for the nth term whenever you're not given d. So we need to start with our d equals the outputs 13 minus 4 over the inputs 4 minus 1. 13 minus 4 is 9 over 3. So the common difference is 3, yeah. Now I plug that into my formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. What was a sub 1? 4. 4 plus n minus 1 times 3. Distribute the 3. a sub n equals 4 plus 3n minus 3. So a sub n equals 3n plus 1. Okay, let's look if we don't have a sub 1. This is pretty much the general rule. And if you're going to memorize one formula, I'd say to memorize this one. Because if you look at it, a sub n equals a sub k plus n minus k uh, times d. So the only thing that we've changed 
this was an a sub 1, but we changed it with a k. So this 1 over here turns to a k as well. So this is for any term. You can use any term with this, just like with the point slope formula. So here, if I want to find the formula for the nth term, I wasn't given a sub 1. I was given a sub 11 with d equal to 5. I can say, OK, a sub n equals, what's the a sub k that we're going to use? OK, so the 11 is the, this is our input. The 11 is the input that's, uh, that acts like our x, like whenever we're thinking about a line. So the a sub k is what the term in the sequence actually is. So what's the term that we're given? 41. Plus n minus, OK, so if a sub uh, 11 is 41, what am I going to put right here? Yeah, 11 times 5. So again, the 11, if we're thinking about like a point slope formula, the 11 x is an x, 41 x is a y. All right, so a sub n equals 41 plus 5 n minus 55. So a sub n equals 5 n. 41 minus 55, negative 14. So that's, that's your rule for finding the nth term. Now, if I wanted to, could I figure out what the third term in the sequence was? Let's do that. Let's find a sub 3. So now I'm going to replace that n with any number, right? So I'm finding a sub 3. a sub 3 equals 5 times 3 minus 14. So the third term of the sequence would be 1. OK, finally, let's do it whenever we're just given two terms in the sequence. We're not given the common difference. So just like with that a sub 1, first thing we need to do is find the common difference. The difference will be 87 minus 7 over what? 22 minus 6. Good. So 80 over 16 is 5. All right, now it doesn't matter which point we choose to use in the formula, we'll get the same answer. Uh, which point would you, or not what point, but which term would you use, rather use? The a sub 6 equals 7? Yeah, that's what I would do as well, because it's easier numbers. So a sub n, I'm going to write down the general form again. a sub k plus n minus k times d. So here we're using a sub 6 equals 7, that term in the sequence. So a sub n, what would my a sub k be here? 7 plus n minus what? 6 times 5. So a sub n equals 7 plus 5n minus 30. So the formula for the nth term is 5n minus 23.